didn't bring, and they prepare things that they're going to come, and they do come Sunday morning. But they honored his body. They put him in a tomb. They honored him. They gave him an honorable burial. They did what they could with the opportunities and the abilities and the circumstances that God gave, they acknowledged and they honored the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't imagine how good it must have felt, how glorious it must have felt, how freeing it must have been when finally they come forward, Jesus is our Lord and we're going to honor. If you've never experienced that, if you've just been hiding, I can't tell you how exhilarating it is. When you go forward, I told you before some of the stories when I first became a Christian, how I'd walk on Penn State campus with my Bible outside my book so that people could see it, and I felt it, and it was so against what I wanted to do. I didn't want anybody to know, but I made myself do it. And I think it set, it set a pattern a habit, as it were, in my soul. I'm not going to hide who I am anymore. How glorious, how freeing it must have been, how good it is when you stand for Jesus. And brothers and sisters, it's never too late. It's never too late to stand for him. Maybe there are people in your family, maybe there are people at work who you've worked with for decades and they don't know you're a believer. It's not too late to honor him. I'm not saying you have to get in everybody's face and take the time at work to be an evangelist. I hate it when people do that. That's just dishonest. You're supposed to do your job at work. But you never deny Christ. You never live secretly for Jesus. Again, I don't think it's the job of the ordinary Christian to right every wrong system or wrong religion. I don't think that's your job. I'm not saying go and attack and confront, again, you know, the woke mob that's going to target you immediately. All your job is to do is just be faithful and, and honor Jesus. And, and seek to live for Him and do it politely, respectfully, humbly, looking to God, praying to Him. And, th you know, the thing is, Christ is reigning and ruling. That's what we acknowledge when we do this. That's what we acknowledge when we stand for Him. Yes, He died, but He lives, and He's in heaven, and He's coming again. And those who act against Him and have seem to have some power to force people to do what they want, He reigns over them. They wouldn't have power to do anything unless he gave it to them. And if he's giving it to them, he's not giving it to them to destroy you. He's giving it to them to, to perfect you, to build you up, to make you endure the test, to strengthen you. You know, it's interesting. When you read the early parts of Judges, I'm in Judges in my devotions, and you read that, and it says God purposely left some of the nations to teach Israel battle to teach them and train them and strengthen them for war so that they would not become enervated and lazy and, and fearful, that they would have to be uh, fierce. I wonder if that's why we're not facing that more and more in our culture. Maybe you young people, maybe God is raising up a generation of warriors, but you've got to learn battle now. You've got to learn to stand. And God's given you the training that you need. Wow, praise the Lord. I got this wonderful training at work from my corporation that's training me to resist evil and to be a stronger Christian because of it and to use wisdom. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, did conquer sin, did conquer Satan, really did overcome the world, is coming again to judge the living and the dead. And if he allows someone to persecute you, what's the worst they can do. The absolute worst, which no one in this country is facing, is send you to heaven with a gold crown on your head. That's the worst they can do. That's the worst. And if you do suffer a little bit, if you do don't get a promotion, if you do lose a job, don't you think God's going to honor you? Don't you think the angels in heaven are singing your praises when that moment comes? When you stand and say, Jesus is worth it? And again, hear me. I don't want people to go and resist everything your companies are doing. I'd say submit to them as much as you can. But don't compromise your faith. If you're trying to figure that out, come to me, talk to me, talk to Pastor Appleton. Talk